If your slides suck, then you're giving yourself and you're giving your audience a problem. And somewhere down the line, you're probably giving someone else a problem, like your, your client, your boss, or even your bank manager. And it can have serious consequences. It can harm your reputation. It can damage your brand. It will certainly damage the message you're trying to get across to your audience. And of course, it could damage your bottom line. But worse than that, you'll be staring out at a sea of unengaged faces, people playing with their phones or staring out of the window, or worse still, getting up and walking out of the room. And we all understand the pain of sitting in the audience when, and looking at an awful PowerPoint presentation. And I understand the pain of the presenter trying to put together a decent slide deck. So today I'm going to give you my three top tips for tip-top presentations. But I can't do it on my own. I'm going to enlist the help of Bad Dave. Some of you may have already met him. He's going to say hello to you. No, never mind that. I'm missing Saturday Kitchen for this, so it better be good. <laughs> Bad Dave. <laughs> Let's hear Bad Dave's first words of wisdom then. I never use animations in my slides. It just makes them look cheap and cheerful and gets in the way. Well, actually, Bad Dave's right, but don't tell him. People use animations and transitions at random in their slides, and just, it just doesn't work. It's not effective. If you're going to use animations in your slides, it needs to be to reinforce the message you're trying to get across or to, to clarify something that you're saying. Let me give you an example of what I mean. I'm going to talk you through the e-commerce payment process where the shopper enters their credit card details on your website, and then your website then sends these, inf these details on to the, the payment gateway, the company you've chosen to process your online payments. And the payment gateway, in turn, sends the information on to the bank for verification. And then the process goes back the other way, where the bank sends the information back to the payment gateway, the payment gateway sends the information back to your website, and finally, a message is displayed to the shopper, which is either a successful payment or a failed payment. If it's a successful payment, the funds are transferred from the shopper's bank into your account. So you see that the way the purposeful animations on the slide can help lead the audience through what is quite a complex process. But animations can also be a bit of fun as well. For example, zhushing up a standard bar chart, something like this, where the tennis balls get gradually larger as the Wimbledon prize money goes up each decade. And this was all done in PowerPoint, by the way. There's nothing secret about this. It's all done with the animations in PowerPoint. There are certain things you shouldn't say in a slide presentation. Bad Dave says a lot of these things, such as... I hope you can read this at the back of the room. <laughs> or even worse... I know you can't read this at the back of the room, but... <laughs> what is Bad Dave saying there? He's saying, you people at the back of the room... You don't count. You're not important. You were out there drinking coffee and came in late. I'm still going to deal with these nice people at the front of the room. Never, ever use those words in a slide presentation. Here's a typical slide that Bad Dave has produced. The five features of a camera. Very small bullet points and a very pointless picture of a camera in the bottom <laughs> right-hand corner. Let me explain to you, or let me just demonstrate to you the way I think this should be shown. The first point was about a large, bright display. So the words large, bright display and a picture of a large, bright display on the screen. It's the sort of thing that Steve Jobs would use, used to do when he was launching an Apple product. And then you can go through each of the points in turn as we talk about the features of the camera. And images can be a very effective way of cutting down the amount of text that you put on, on a slide. And as I said, it's more fun to produce things with images as well, isn't it? But more importantly than that, if, you, if, you're using it, if you're using images in slides, it makes it more memorable in the audience's mind and therefore more effective and gets your message across. Who, let me give you an example of this. Who likes dogs? If I was to tell you that 47,000 dogs were abandoned in the UK in the last 12 months, how would you feel? Horrified. Horrified. Who else likes dogs? Jeremy. If I was to tell you that 47,000 dogs were abandoned in the UK in the last 12 months, how would that make you feel? Very bad. Very bad. Even more horrified, I hope, seeing that image on the screen. So the image on the screen reinforces the point I was trying to make. There's a dog with a doleful eye staring out as his owner deserts him. By the way, no dogs were harmed in the making of this <laughs> presentation.
Here's another one of Bad Dave's slides. Oh, it's all about the marketing funnel. The marketing funnel. There are, there are 17 things wrong with this slide. I haven't got time to go through them all now. Um, but, let's, but let's hear what Bad Dave has got to say about it. You don't have to take notes. I've made all these slides available as a handout. Um, okay, if you only take one point away from this presentation today, let it be this. If your slides work as handouts, then they don't work as slides. Your slides are ephemeral. They're there just to serve the audience whilst you're talking on stage for 10, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it happens to be. Um, you often hear slides referred to as speaker support slides. I want to get you away from that way of thinking and think of them instead as audience support slides. Okay? They're there to support the audience for the time that you're on stage, not to support you as a prompt when you're giving the presentation. And of course, there's a handy acronym to remember, audience support slides. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. Here's a, here's a picture to help in that regard. So let's go back to this slide that Bad Dave's produced, and I'm going to let him present it in his own inimitable style. So, this is the marketing funnel. The first stage is awareness, where your customer becomes aware of you via your marketing and advertising. <laughs> the second stage is consideration, where your customer thinks about buying from you, prompted by further marketing and advertising. The third okay, stage okay, 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 okay. <laughs> That's enough. That's so tedious. Terrible. <laughs> and the problem is, he's, he's reading out point two, where you're probably reading point five. So let me quickly show you how I think this should be presented, the marketing funnel. Here's the five steps to the marketing funnel. The first stage is awareness, where your customer becomes aware of you through your marketing and advertising. The second stage of the marketing funnel is consideration, where your customer thinks about buying from you prompted by further marketing and advertising. And then comes the all-important third stage, conversion, where your customer actually spends money with you, buying your product or service. But that's not the end of the story. You then want to engender loyalty by free offers, sales, and so on and so forth. And then you get to the holy grail of the marketing funnel, which is advocacy, where your customer shouts about you and your products and services to their friends and family, and they start spending money with you as well. So those are the five steps to loyal and engaged customers of the marketing funnel. Now I hope you'll agree that was a lot better than the slide that Bad Dave used, but the problem is if I now turn around to you and said, I'm going to make these slides available to you as a handout, there's seven slides. And I've cut the text right down. Bad Dave's slide contains 71 words. This only contains 14 words. And of course, um, if you try printing those out, you're going to end up exhausting your ink cartridges. <laughs> So actually, Bad Dave's original slide contains all of the ingredients for a handout. So it wasn't that bad then, was it? <laughs> yes, it was that bad. My suggestion would be that you produce a handout that it mimics the slide that you produce. So this has got the same funnel, the same colours, the same typeface, the same pictures of the guy on the right-hand side, and would work much better as a handout for the audience member to take away after the presentation and read at their leisure. So those, I'm going to, re, I'm going to reiterate the, um, the point. If your slides work as handouts, and they don't, then they don't work as slides, take that, that point away. OK, I hope that you found what I've said today to be useful. Um, oh, I did, yeah. Your talks are always very educational. Oh, thanks, Barry. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I always go away thinking, well, that taught me a lesson. <laughs> If you'd like my 10 top tips for tip-top presentations, please send an email to dave at the slidepresentationman.co.uk. I would also love to connect with you on LinkedIn or join my ever-growing presentation group, um, Facebook Presentation Perfection. Um, I've been Dave Henson. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you.